Okay, coming up on FTC Top 25, we have 25 amazing teams comprised of your votes from the community. We'll count down the list, give some insights into these teams, have a couple giveaways, and more. So let's get ready for the final center stage FTC Top 25. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Hello everyone and welcome to FTC Top 25, where we reveal the top 25 teams that you all voted for. For first updates now, I'm Abbas and joining me tonight are Buru, Miriam, Thomas and our producer behind the scenes, Tyler. We're excited to have you all tonight as we start gearing up for the World Championship. You know, it's only uh, five, five days away now. Wow. And for so many of you to participate in our FTC Top 25 voting. So this is going to be the last top 25 for uh, center stage. So no need to ask you guys to keep your eyes out for when voting opens next month. Um, but tonight we have two giveaways, one from Andy Mark and another from OptiTech. So stay tuned to hear how you can enter and win. Uh, with that, let's just get right into our final FTC center stage top 25. Starting off at 25th, we have team 3747, The Hive from Utah. They were the Inspire Award winner and winning Alliance captain at the Utah State Championship, so double cling bling for them. And we did a behind the bot with them just a few weeks or a month ago, and I think they've just executed their entire robot really well. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on with that double arm, uh, but it's very stable, consistent, and clearly works well. I can't wait to see uh, what improvements they've made for Houston. Um, you know, being in the Ochoa division, they'll be against the likes of Hyperion, Robo Kings, and more. Um, so they'll have a lot of competition, but I think they'll make for a great alliance partner uh, for eliminations. And, you know, they definitely could end up as a captain as well. It's just, you know, anything can happen at Houston and anything will happen. Um, yeah. Anything you guys want to add on to this robot? Miriam, what do you think? I think this is, yeah, it's a really amazing robot. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, coming out of Utah, um, you know, like not you know that they they were winning alliance captain um and yeah i mean I'm excited to see them in houston uh you know For we'll sure. be we'll be against them <laughs> all right thomas let's uh talk about your next your team then all right coming in at 24th is team 17713 delta force from romania although they didn't qualify to the world championships this year they still had an amazing bot that featured a surgical tubing drop down style intake, which was awesome at picking up off the stacks with a bucket styled outtake that was really nice for them, uh, depositing the pixels both efficiently and effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think Delta Force is uh, really a team that's been just so strong every year, you know, especially having one worlds two years ago. Uh, but this year, I think they've brought out a really another great robot Buru I think you saw a lot more of them uh, than we all have what what were your thoughts uh, on this robot at Romania Nationals yeah Delta Force was really good I loved watching them play I honestly I'm sad they didn't get to play with them but I love just watching them and I was really sad to see them not uh, playing aliens they def definitely deserved it so yeah. mm -hmm. overall amazing robot and you could definitely see that Delta Force driving there yeah for sure and you know guys on the topic of like talking about teams that didn't make it to worlds or were shifting gears just a little bit to teams that didn't make it onto our top 25 uh one thing to the audience that we are doing tonight for our final center stage is giving our snubs and shout outs so before our top five we'll talk about teams that we all thought definitely deserved to be in the top 25 or teams that were in the top 50 that we just really wanted to highlight, uh, you know, so stay tuned for that. Um, but Buru, why don't you continue talking about the 23rd team? Okay. In spot number 23. Oh, sorry. So they did it. Texan from Cape Town, South Africa, comes in the 23rd spot. And they are, as far as I know, the first South African team to make it in the top 25. They made that really public and made everyone know that. So yeah, they, were very vocal about it. 
they were the winning of last caps and then his prior award winners had the South African National Championship. So they definitely check all the boxes. They definitely deserve being in here. And I just, I, their robot is really cool. Their outtake is innovative and I can't wait to see what they do in the Fracklin division at Worlds, along with a lot of very competitive teams and a lot of things we've seen here before, like in Reveal Night and that we're going to see in the, the 25. Yeah, and you know we'll be talking about the Franklin division again and again and again uh, tonight, but I guess we'll just have a little discussion now. Uh, Thomas, do you see Techspin more as a, an alliance captain, first pick, second pick? Where where do you see them ranking? Uh, if you had to, uh, you know, make a make a make a pick. Um, I definitely see them as like a a first pick, maybe maybe like a a really high second pick, but. Mm-hmm. Like, their robot is so good and so compatible with so many teams, especially having the side game. I, I think that's really going to pay off for them at Worlds. And, yeah, I, I just can't wait to see what they do with it. I, I really think if they're not a first pick, I think they're going to be the first seed second pick. All right. Okay. <laughs> there you there you heard it. So, Miriam, why don't we go on to number 22? Taking the 22nd slot is Team 12791, Iterative Intentions from Flower Mound, Texas. After being the winning alliance first pick and winning Inspire at the Texas State Championship, we will be seeing them in the Jemison division next week. As you can see on screen, they have a 2 plus 3 auto on the perimeter side, which is something we haven't been seeing a lot up until recently, but I think it will be very useful in Houston in order to work with a partner. Another feature they have is the ability to relocate pixels on the backdrop, which is optimal for mosaics. Overall, this is a really smooth and consistent robot, and I really can't wait to see it perform at Worlds. Yeah, I think, Thomas, you're definitely the expert uh, out of us four to speak on this, so take it away. Uh, yeah, yeah. Iterative is just like an amazing robot. Uh, we were we were alliance partners with them at State. They're just, they're just like an amazing team, whether it's their claw, whether it's their deposit, they're just the epitome of consistency, and they were always getting three mosaics every match, making sure that they were just always in contention to win every match, regardless of how the schedule is. I'm really excited to see what they're going to do at uh, in the Jemison division, and I can't wait to see what they do at Worlds. Yeah, all right. So coming in at 21st, we have another Texas team in 19746, the Destructingly Robocephalic Brainstem Robotics team. They were the final science first pick at the Texas State Championship and are currently ranked 12th by OPR. I think we can all agree in saying that they have a one of a kind robot this year uh, with the six wheel drive, many degree of freedom deposit and just overall a very powerful footprint uh i would say coming into the edison division i think they're one of the clear favorites to end up as captains uh just because they're so versatile and you know as i said earlier just such a powerhouse uh honestly and so one question i have for you guys is how effective do you think their six wheel drive will be in their division um yeah buru what are what are your thoughts on that honestly i I think i said this before but I honestly love the idea of just a, a, a six-wheel drive in the center stage. I really feel like there's a lot of uh, opportunity for adding degrees of friends to the outtake so that you can do a six-wheel drive. And I think some teams really pull it off well, like uh, Brainstem or I think also Electron Volts. They also mm-hmm. do something similar. So yeah, I just love what teams come up with to work around the six-wheel drive limitations and this thing definitely did it really well. Awesome. Yeah, Thomas, go ahead with number 20. All right. Coming in at 20th is team 12014 Firewires from Osceola, Indiana. Firewires is one of my favorite robots this season with a really innovative and fast scoring robot. Whether it's their super fast intake that allows them to pick up efficiently off the stacks or their amazing swivel deposit that allows them to have so much control over how they're making mosaics. Uh, and just one other thing I wanted to point out about uh, them was uh, their driving. When there's like a ton of robots on the field, they're really great at navigating. But another thing that a lot of teams uh, miss, especially with their swivel deposit, is right when they intake, they know exactly where they're placing those pixels and they know exactly what they want to do with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think you just covered it really, really well. And we saw just an absolutely fantastic reveal uh, from them a few minutes ago on the reveal night. Okay, Buru, let's hear number 19. Okay, uh, team 23435 Jarabat 
Gyrobotic Droids from Westchester, Ohio comes in at number 19. They were the winning alliances for Speak at Ohio Championship, barely missing their qualification to the World Championship, sadly. The alliance went on defeating the eliminations and lost only one and they lost only one qualification match. It's amazing how precisely they can pick out the white tails from the stack and all. It honestly amazes me. And they work so well with Juniper Robotics in executing that three pixel and three mosaic on two lines a strategy each match it's honestly amazing to see mm -hmm. yeah no for sure uh you know ohio definitely competitive juniper is a powerhouse i think gyrobotic droids is another fantastic team definitely deserving um to be this this high up in our top 25. okay miriam let's uh, talk about number 18 then coming in at slot number 18 is team 8610 tobertech from lake oswego oregon as the winning alliance first pick at the Oregon State Championship, we'll be seeing them in the Jemison division next week. One thing that I am curious about this season is how Extendo will work out at Worlds. Um, I worry that another robot could easily play defense against an Extendo while intaking, but I'm sure that Tober Tech has a plan and I'm looking forward to see what, what they do in Houston. Yeah, so, you know, Miriam, you mentioned the defense with the extender. Do you think that's something we'll see in qualifications and elims or just more specifically reserved for elim matches? I think it's something, I mean, it's about wins and losses. I, I predict it will happen all the time because, like, like, I feel like, okay. honestly, the only time when it's really safe to use the extendo is auto because I, 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 obviously, I can't predict the future, but I do think that it's, like if you like you you can win a match and also like it's really easy to break an extendo on some robots mm -hmm. for sure you know speaking of extendos i think it's apt to go on to 17th place where we have team 22947 hydra from israel they've been another team i've seen a bunch of clips of uh throughout the season and although we won't be seeing them in houston i really hope they receive an invitation uh to mti I think they've done a great job with the transfer specifically on their robot, as those are always difficult uh, to pull off. And also, I think their decision to drop pixels upside down on the backdrop, or at least have the claw upside down, was definitely the right move. It just overall really speeds up the process uh, of, of depositing pixels on the backdrop and results in just a very fluid teleop, I would say, on their end overall. Yeah. Thomas, want to go on to 16? All right. Uh, coming in at 16th is team 21229 Quality Control from Bellevue, Washington. This robot is just another great example of how Quality Control just always cranks out amazing robots right before Worlds. And I'm sure they had this planned in, way in advance, but with whether it's their swivel deposit or their amazing drop-down intake that just works perfectly when intaking off the stacks, this robot will definitely make a lot of noise in the Franklin division and possibly run it back this year and uh, win it again. Yeah. So, you know, again, Franklin division coming up. I think we can talk a little bit about that here. Quality control last year. They were not the captain uh, of their alliance, although they were very instrumental, I would say, uh, in, in taking home, uh, you know, the gold in Houston. Um, but do you guys see them ending up as a captain this, this year in Houston or no? you think they'll be, again, a pick, a uh, first pick or something? Rue, what do you think? Well, the Franklin division is really competitive, really, but it's defi they're definitely out there, so I mm -hmm. anything could happen, to be honest. But I think quality control is just one of those teams that really knows how to win matches and competitions, so they just do that really well. No matter what they do, they always seem to end up on top, so yeah, I am really excited to see what they do. They honestly surprise me every time. Yeah, I think one point to make here is the fact that there'll be, I think, 10 or 11 matches in Houston this year uh, per team for qualifications. And what that means is just like you have to have to have to be consistent throughout all of your matches. And I think quality control is really one of the gold standards uh, when it comes to that. And I, I'm sure they must have one of the most hours, uh, you know, run on their bot uh, out of teams coming to Houston. Yeah. yeah okay, with that. We've gone through 10 already fantastic teams. Let's start our audience giveaway and thank our show sponsor. To do so, we'll bring on our producer, Tyler, uh, to tell us more. Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, we uh, welcome back uh, Opti as well to Opti Tech and giving away uh, these awesome 
uh, odometry uh, uh, pods that they have here as well, too. So if you're interested in winning this, type in Opti Odo uh, in chat right now. This is a compact solution to the FTC odometry that is built uh, to just have an absolute fantastic performance as well, too. So a uh, really big thank you, by the way, to uh, OptiTech for their awesome giveaways. Uh, this allows teams to easily integrate dead wheel down tree into their robots and be sure that they'll receive accurate and reliable data, allowing them to truly unlock the potential of their robot, especially in autonomous. Uh, so type that in chat. We'll draw for that in a little bit um, as well. And don't forget, please be following the uh, channel here on Twitch since we're doing this one on Twitch in order to be eligible to win. We're also going to thank our show sponsor, Kettering University, for the continued support here on FUN. Uh, Kettering University, a lot of great things going on, including their $5,000 a year scholarship that they offer, just the first teams. Um, so go to kettering.edu slash first and see if that would be a good fit uh, for you. Um, Kettering University, also a lot of great programs that they have. Uh, one of the best things about Kettering University is their co-op program where every single student that attends Kettering University will be in a co-op uh, program where they can earn money, get great experience as well too. And don't forget to check out their first robotics center that they have, combat uh, robotics teams, esports, and so much more. So thanks again to Kettering University for the continued support of fun. And let's get back into the FTC Top 25. All right, Buru, with that, let's hear uh, about Team 15. Okay, uh, team 19162, Yaku from Almaty, Kazakhstan, places in the 15th slot in the final top 25. They had such a good run at, at their championship, not losing a single match. They also won second place in Spire. They also won second place in Spire. I have to say, I love their color scheme. Pink is one of my favorite colors, and it looks so good on robots. They currently hold the sixth highest top PR in the world and will compete again in the Franklin Division at Worlds. <laughs> I can't wait to see how they. Man, there's so many teams here that are competing in the Franklin Division. It's like all the just really public teams gathered there. It's funny. Yeah, no, I think they're one of the teams I really, really want to do a behind the bot with. Uh, you know, definitely give them some more exposure and publicity uh, because they totally deserve it. And I think there's a lot of great things on that robot to see. One thing I am curious about is to see how the change in tiles will, will affect the robot. Uh, you know, theoretically, it shouldn't affect it too much, if at all. Um, but that playing field definitely looks pretty different uh, than the one Houston has or other competition fields uh, have. But those are those are just my thoughts. Yeah. Miriam, you want to talk about number 14? Sure. So in the 14th spot is team 19743, definitely human from La Jala, California. With a top 10 OPR, they were the finalist they were on the finalist alliance at the San Diego Regionals after going up against the insane world record alliance of Clueless and Robotopie. While they didn't quite make it to Worlds, I still really like their robot. Their intake is able to grab pixels from the sides, which is which not a lot of teams do, and their outtake can also shift from side to side, giving them lots of flexibility on the backdrop. I really hope to see them at MTI or another off-season event. Yeah. Miriam, is this video that you selected, was that an autonomous period uh, that, that was running? I, I feel like yes. it was because the timer yes. was above two minutes. Yes, it was an autonomous period that you saw. Uh, yeah. Okay, that is that is interesting. I'm glad to see they are very resistant to robots crossing onto their side of the field uh, during autonomous. You know, not sure we could say that for many other teams. Um, but yeah, no, that, that was super interesting. Um, okay. In 13th place, we have team 19098 Eastern Foxes from Romania. Although they did not qualify for the World Championship, they currently have the ninth highest auto OPR and teleop OPRs, leading them to have the 11th highest non-penalty OPR. They submitted a 268-point solo score for MTI, which is definitely on the higher end of scores. And, uh, you know, specifically about the robot, I think they've made excellent use of their intake extension, uh, which is definitely made easier to use uh, because of their super fluid active intake. You know, I think uh, extendo intakes are a, a tricky subject to decide, you know, if you're going to implement one or not. Um, I think one of the biggest driving factors for teams in deciding whether to do one is to see if your base intake itself uh, is good. And, you know, Buru, I think you can definitely speak to this uh, more because, you know, you you guys decided to make the switch from a non-extending intake to an extending intake this season. Uh, and, you know, having seen how Eastern Foxes is, what do you what do you think about that? Man, I have to say, I got to play against Eastern Foxes and it was scary in this uh... <laughs> It was all right. Just 
<laughs> just scary, yeah. Their intake is so good. I honestly am jealous. It works so well, and their transfer is also really fast, which I still don't really know how it works, but yeah, it does. It's a really nice robot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thomas, let's uh, talk about number 12 then. All right. Coming in at 12th is Team 8393, the giant diacephalic brainstem robotics team from Baden, Pennsylvania. Brainstem not advancing the Worlds this year was probably one of the biggest uh, shockers for me especially. Um, as a team, I think that they've qualified every year I've done FTC and even before my time in FTC. Um, and although they won't be at Worlds this year, the robot was still amazing with a sleek drivetrain that allowed them to traverse any area on the field. And their deposit was equally amazing, amazing being able to allow them to adjust uh, and score pixels in any orientation they needed. Yeah, I mean, you know, Thomas Brainstem is no stranger uh, to MTI or any other number of off-season competitions. So hopefully we get to see more of their robot uh, then. But definitely interesting seeing how that swerve uh, was implemented uh, on this robot. You know, I think they did a great job. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, can't wait to see more of them uh, in the coming years, in the coming seasons, uh, but hopefully also at an off-season event this year. Yeah, Baru, why don't we talk about number 11? Okay, all system go. All systems go from Lexi, California is 11th in the top. They have the 44th highest OPR in the world and were the final Celine's captain at the San Diego Championship and winners of the Innovator World. Certainly you won't see them at Worlds, but they definitely didn't make it easy for the world record holding alliance to win. I love the strategy they were playing in the finals. They were focusing on the side of the back row close to the center of the field, where their partners were stacking high on the other side. And yeah, I think that works worked out really well. Sadly, they just couldn't hold the World Record, winning, uh, World Record holding alliance. But yeah, they did such a good job, and it's a really good robot. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talked about their alliance partners, definitely Hubert just three slots ago, I think, and just yeah. what a yeah. tough finals, uh, right? I mean, Roboctify and Clueless against all systems go, and definitely Human. Really uh, tough knowing that only two of those teams are going to are going to make it to Houston out of there. I think... I think I've heard talks of California switching to like a entire California based system for next year. So if that's the case, you know, definitely more slots uh, for those teams uh, to take. And I hope we would see them. Um, but in the meantime, definitely a bunch of off season competitions. Uh, I think there's also like the lobster cup in California. So that's a little closer to all systems go rather than something like MTI. Um, if that's too far for them, but yeah, why don't we get started with the top 10 Miriam? Starting off our top 10 is none other than Team 11329 Ice Robotics from Bloomington, Indiana. They are currently ranked 8th by OPR and as the Inspire Award winner at the Indiana State Championship, we'll see them in the Franklin Division next week. In watching their MTI submission, which you can see on screen, I'm a big fan of their intake. I think that the really wide drop down will help them at Worlds. Franklin is definitely a stacked division, but I'm still expecting a strong performance from Ice in Houston. Yeah. And, you know, Buru and I already talked about them uh, a little bit during our finale group. So, Thomas, why don't we hear your thoughts? Um, yeah, Ice is just amazing, whether it's the aesthetic of the robot or how how good they are in Teleop, as like you could see in that video and, and in Autonomous. Their drop down, especially being so wide, I think will definitely help them whether it's picking up in corners or picking up in like areas that they're not necessarily used to picking up from. But yeah, allowing that margin barrier will definitely help them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you and Miriam hit uh, some really critical points. So in ninth place, we have team 7172 technical difficulties. I think we can all say that we're still reeling a little bit uh, from the fact that they won't be competing in Houston this year. I think sometimes that's just how FTC pans out. You know, Texas is still definitely sending some very, very strong teams uh, to, to the World Championship. Regardless, they have a robot that just blows everyone's mind uh, with the efficiency and effectiveness. I really hope we see them at MTI. You know, they've been there the past couple of years, uh, also winning it, uh, you know, not to mention two seasons ago. And I think the intake and transfer is just so fluid. And it's something that teams will be looking at for many seasons to come. Uh, you know, even though the game changes every year, there's still core principles that I think are very sound year to year. Um, and and technical difficulties definitely definitely has uh, some of those principles in their intake. Buru, anything you want to add about them? 
I mean, technical difficulties for the time I was in SEC always just pulled off just the most crazy bots. And I love that this year too. It's just, yeah, amazing team, amazing robots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Thomas, you saw them compete at Texas States. Any, anything you want to add? Um, yeah, their, their transfer is just amazing. Whether it's just like picking up off the stack or picking up off the ground, they're just amazing. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, with that, Thomas, why don't we go on to number eight? All right. Coming in at eight, uh, we have team 17692, Rotu D2 from Romania. This team just has an amazing robot. Whether it's their super long extension intake, their amazing intake that is just perfect at picking up off the stacks, their flawless transfer, or their okay. deposit that allows them to have complete control over pixel placement. This team has definitely been one of my favorite robots this season, and I can't wait to see how they perform in the Ochoa division at Worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, you know, while we have this matchup on screen, not just Row 2 D2, but wow, what what a mix of teams uh, in this match. You know, Peppers, Row 2 D2, uh, and Eastern Foxes. I think teams were all that all, are all going to be on our top 25, or at least have been on our top 25 in the uh, in the center stage season. But yeah, Row 2, we saw just a really phenomenal reveal from them a uh, few few minutes ago or 30 minutes ago i guess on our on our reveal night um buru anything you want to add about them man row two are just one of my favorite robots i think my favorite robot in romania to be honest and yeah they're just amazing they were amazing alliance partners i love playing with them they just so well yeah and i think miriam you will be playing with or against them uh in houston so anything you want to add well i hope it's with and not against that's for <laughs> sure um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're another extendo robot, so, you know, maybe we'll go well with them. Um, although my concern still st still stands. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, just like I was watching their matches and like, wow, like, you know, Row 2D2, they're like one of those teams, like, you know, they came out of like, what is, in my opinion, the most difficult region in the world. Um, and, you know, they totally deserve their spot. And yeah, I'm really excited to hopefully compete with them next week. Yeah. And, you know, one uh, one other thing I want to talk about with Romania, when I was looking at the advancement, it was just like insane that uh, all three of the Inspire Award recipients were also the <laughs> finalist alliance, you know, finalist alliance first, second and third or captain first and second picks. So just really, really goes to show you how competitive uh, how competitive Romania is. Um, but yeah, okay, Baru, why don't we go on to number seven? Okay, nine nine six one four Hyperion from Fremont, California is seventh. This robot blows my mind. Its in, its intake is almost as uh, in, its outtake, sorry, is almost as long as something's intake extension, and they make it work tr through a very interesting linkage that uses gear six in it. Their intake is also very effective. They're one of the few teams that hit a two plus four auto along with Roboforce, I think, and Rosofia. I can't wait to see how this team performs at Worlds in the Ochoa division. They were the highest, they were the winning alliance captain of the Norco Championship, and so the expectations for them are high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm a little surprised uh, by their OPR. You know, I definitely was expecting it to be more in the 170, 180 range. Regardless, they performed exceptionally well uh, at NorCal. You know, I think performing pretty much how everyone expected them uh, to. And as we saw again in our reveal night in the finale group, they came out with a new robot uh, for Worlds. So really, really excited to see how that pans out for them. You know, I think they're one of those teams that you know is just not going to make any decision without thinking through all of the risks, all of the benefits, really doing a strong analysis on it. So for them to come out with an entirely new robot, I think is a very data-driven and powerful uh, choice. So can't wait to see how it performs, especially uh, the deposit. And I think we're definitely going to do it behind the bot uh, with them at Worlds. But yeah, Miriam, you want to go on to number six? Taking slot number six is team 16166, What's Up from Romania. They were on the winning alliance in what is probably the most difficult region in the world. I think I've already mentioned how a tough Romania <laughs> is. And they will be competing in the Jemison division next week. Their auto goes under the middle truss, which is a risky strategy, but has very high potential if properly coordinated with a partner. 
Most robots featuring a transfer have an active intake, but that is not the case for them. I think this is a really impressive robot that will be putting up some high scores in Houston. Yeah, and you know, I think one thing with What's Up, they've been regulars on our top 25 this season. And going into Romania National Championships, everyone, you know, I think we were thinking, well, how is that claw really going to play out? You know, we've seen a ton of intakes, ton of extendo active intakes, um, but What's Up really kind of stands apart from everyone with that claw. Um, regardless, I think it turned out very well for them. You know, they were just super, super fluid as we expected them to be. Um, and seeing them end up as the winning Alliance first pick, uh, you know, was definitely within the realm of possibilities. And I'm excited to see how they, how they do in Houston. Yeah. Thomas, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, just something I wanted to add there was, well, even though they had a claw, they executed it perfectly with, uh, how much dry practice they had. It's, it's uh, just apparent from watching their match videos, whether it's in finals or in, or in qualifications, their robot was just so consistent, and I really think that's that's what helped them get it over the top and win Romania. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay, with that, uh, before we get to our top five teams, let's take a quick break and draw for the winner of our first giveaway uh, and start drawing for our next giveaway. So, Tyler, uh, why don't we do that? Yep. Once again, uh, giving away the awesome Optiodometry pod. So, if you do win, please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner. And the winner of that is going to be uh, Sphinx3200. Congratulations uh, to you. Make sure you go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner in order to enter on that. And, yeah, let's start our second giveaway uh, right away from our friends at uh, Animark uh, who are giving away uh, the driver station table. Um, well, I forgot to update the keyword, so we'll still stick with GOAT. That's okay. Um, so that's going to be for the uh, First Tech Challenge driver station table. Uh, so if you're interested in winning this, uh, why not? Type in GOAT in chat, uh, and that's going to be your keyword to win uh, for that as well, too. And with that said, we have some uh, some new changes here in the FTC Top 25. We're going to be highlighting some new teams, so let's send it back uh, to a Boston crew to talk more about it. Yeah, so I think now we're going to start our first top 50 shout out segment. Um, so Thomas is going to give it the kick it off with a team that he thought was that he thought should have been higher uh, than the top 50. Uh, and I think Tyler, are we going to be putting up the list on screen or just releasing it after? Great. So Thomas, take it away. All right. So my top 50 goes out to team 12928, the Lightsaders from Austin, Texas, who were ranked 35th by the community, but who I thought maybe should have been ranked a little bit higher, but that's okay. This team is just phenomenal. Whether you remember them from being on the finalist alliance in Freight Frenzy with the Clueless and the Brainstormers, or from this year when they were a part of the Texas State Winning Alliance. This team is just the epitome of consistency, and it showed in their matches and eliminations where they set the record, the Texas State record of 355 points with Team 12791 Iterative Intentions. Especially after competing with them at States, it was just incredible seeing how they move around the field, whether it's pushing teams around or navigating around them. I can't wait to see how they perform in the Franklin Division at Worlds, and who knows, maybe we might see them run it back with Clueless this year. <laughs> that that would be crazy, uh, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. But definitely, definitely could could happen. Okay, Buru, let's hear your top fifty shout out. Okay, so my top fifty shout out goes to uh, none other than to one four five five Vera Sofia. They place in the thirty six spot, but I don't think they need much introduction. The twelve inch cube robot that holds the auto world record a four past ten is one of my favorites. It's one of the few highly competitive robots using a solar drive this year. They made the work really well and I really hope they perform well at worlds. They were the, the winners they were the winners of second place inspired Romanian nationals and had a great run in eliminations big being the second pick of the finalist alliance. Honestly, I love Rosofia. I love the robot so much and I can't wait to see how they do. Yeah, for sure. And I think they'll be in the Edison division uh, at World. So, you know, seeing them aligns with Roboctopi, KookieBots, uh, just a whole host of teams uh, that they could be with. But yes, very, very cool seeing them uh, run on the field. Uh, yeah, Miriam, what do you think about them? I think, you know, 12-inch cube and swerve, like the combination of the two is just insane. Like... <laughs> really like ha like how do you fit a swerve i mean like that's just packaging on another level um so yeah that's just really impressive you know i saw i saw some of their matches in romania on the stream you know i really smooth and consistent robot um i think they will 
do really well at Worlds. Um, I predict they'll be either a captain or a first pick. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, we saw how a 12 inch swerve did at Worlds last year and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, so hopefully, you know, hopefully they do that well or better. Uh, even. Yeah. Okay, Miriam, let's hear your top 50 shout out. My shout out goes to the team ranked number 34, team 11260, Upper Creek Robotics from Longmont, Colorado. We've talked about them a lot on top 25 this season, and it is really a shame that this robot won't be at Worlds. I really like how their robot, how their intake folds out and smoothly transfers into their, their outtake, which can rotate in order to easily create mosaics. I know that they are a regular at CRI, and I'm hoping to see them at MTI this year, since it would be really cool to see them compete with the top teams, which they won't be doing at Worlds, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, Upper Creek saw just absolutely amazing reveal uh, from them just year after year. You know, they put out really high quality content. And I, I feel like the person has to graduate at some point, but also they definitely must be doing some really good knowledge transfer because just I think they always have excellent reveals. Um, but yeah, I think one team I have to shout out uh, in the top 50 for me is going to be rank 30, 16449 Juniper Robotics. Uh, honestly, I feel like they're just not talked about enough. Uh, but time and time again, their teleop is next level. They are currently ranked number one in terms of teleop OPR in the world. And uh, as they are in the Jemison division, I could totally see them alliancing uh, with what's up, uh, you know, or any other number of excellent teams, um, but having a deep run. I think if juniper and what's up were to be on the lines together it could definitely uh compete for the teleop record i i know it's a very very high uh teleop score to beat right now at uh about 190 191 points uh but i i think juniper and what's up together could go for it yeah thomas anything you want to add with juniper yeah just something i wanted to add with them is just like their deposit and at the backdrop is just so smooth like they immediately, once they pick up the pixels, they're driving to the perfect spot to place those pixels. And they also know the perfect uh, uh, way in which to place Mosaic, it, especially yeah. with their with their uh, their uh, independent uh, claw. For sure. Yeah. OK, Thomas, let's uh, talk about your snub then. So just some background uh, for the snubs, since this is the first time we're doing them on top 25. So these are going to be teams that we just felt weren't talked about uh, enough or like weren't voted in the top 25 uh, at all and that we really want to highlight top 25 or top 50 uh, that we really want to highlight. So Thomas, take it away. All right. So my top 25 snub is going to go to team 18270 Robo players from Irving, Texas. This team is just amazing with their two plus six autonomous and also their teammate detection that they have for their wall side autonomouses. And additionally, having been able to see them uh, perform at the Texas State Championship and nearly upset a powerhouse like South them, I can't wait to see what they'll do at Worlds in the Jemison division. Yeah, for sure. I think that's pretty much a perfect uh, example. Thomas, just really, really strong team. Kind of surprising they weren't uh, ranked higher in our, in our voting. But, you know, it's a community vote. That's how it goes sometimes. Okay, Baru, let's uh, go on to your snub. Oh, my God. One, two, nine. 9-3, the Raw Kings uh, Orem. Though ha hasn't heard much about the RK since the Australian National Championship, but they are coming towards and they will be a force to be reckoned with. Turning for so seamlessly, the chance is, is so fast, and the outtake has to go to one, of, one member of their team more than 5 but less than 10 degrees of freedom. I can't wait to see this amazing girl on the field. It will be a full-on spectacle, to be honest. I just I love it so much. and. Yeah, and see. I'm really glad we're able to show, uh, you know, some footage of their new robot uh, before Worlds. It's really, really impressive, and it's just going to be so, so fast when it works. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be crazy. Miriam, anything you want to add about them? Yeah, I mean, Rob Robo Kings, like they're just like you know, th year after year they come, like you know, they are an where one of the Australian powerhouses, um, and like yeah, I mean. It's kind of like, you know, last year I was expecting them to go a little farther. This year, I think that, you know, well, we'll be with or against them. Um, so <laughs> hopefully, again, hopefully with. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, Robo Kings, it's just like, you know, that extendo, like an extendo and side game is not like that company, like those are two very complex mechanisms. So I'm really curious to see how those two, two different metas uh, work together. Um, but I think this robot has some very high potential. Great. Yeah, I think you made a lot of great points, Miriam. Let's uh, talk about your snub then. All right, so my snub is going to be Team 13356 Roboforce from Fremont, California. They were the finalist alliance captain at NorCal, so unfortunately won't be at Worlds. In their MTI submission, which you can see on screen, they ran a 2 plus 8 auto. From their drop down intake to the good mosaic outtake, this robot is just so smooth, and I can't wait to see it compete at off-season events. Yeah, I think they submitted like at least 290, uh, you know, maybe even higher, just around there. I would be shocked if we don't see them at a very competitive off-season event. Um, but, you know, just time and time again, RoboForce builds very smooth, very simple, but very, very effective robots. And, you know, center stage is no exception uh, at all. Yeah. So my snub is going to have to be Team uh, 16460. I've been saying it all year, I think, on our top 25s, but I think Gearheads just has to be one of the most mechanically impressive robots this year. They were the Inspire Word second place recipient uh, at Wisconsin States, just showing how strong they are all around as well. Um, but I really want to focus on how effective their deposit is. Besides South Stem, we really haven't seen many other teams come out with such a well-executed solution. And I guess they differ uh, in, against South Stem because they use a differential uh, deposit rather than uh, South Stem's design, um, but I just cannot wait to see how they fare in Houston. They are so, so, so fast, um, and I, I hope they make a deep run in judging uh, as well. You know, I think they totally deserve the design or innovate award uh, in their division, and, you know, being with, uh, being in the Franklin division, seeing them with Clueless or AI Citizens or just any other number of amazing teams in Franklin would be insane, uh, and I think they'll have a very, very strong run. Yeah, anything you guys want to add, Baru? I think I recognize this robot, and man, I loved it from the start. It's just so nice. It's that side game with the differential and lift, it's such a nice idea, which I think we all thought about it at the start of the season. It's so fun. Yeah. Okay, now coming in at fifth place, we have Team 19043, Silas from Romania. They were the finalist alliance first pick at the Romania National Championship, uh, as well as Inspire Word third place recipient. They have a whole number of records I could talk about. I mean, most pixels scored in auto alongside Rosofia, 291 point MTI submission, just absolutely insane robot overall i think one thing i really want to highlight with them uh you know beyond their intake and multiple degrees of freedom deposit is really their climbing mechanism it may not be too well known but they actually have a uh, pto climb that goes off of the drivetrain motors actually and so it's very very fast very effective and i think a, a clever mechanism uh overall yeah Buru, is there anything you want to add that i missed and i mean just Honestly, I am so happy with how this robot turned out. There's so little that can be improved here, and we're definitely going to make those improvements, but this is this is such a fun robot to drive, and this works so well. It's just, yeah, I love it, honestly. Yeah, awesome. Okay, Thomas, why don't you go into fourth place? All right, coming out fourth, we have one of everyone's favorite team, which is team 16379, Cookie Bots. This team is just amazing. Whether it's their pioneering of the Trident Claw this season or their Jack in the Bot style arm that just perfectly allows them to gain extension, not only when grabbing pixels, but also when depositing. Although it's their last season, I can't see what they're gonna, uh, I can't wait to see what they're gonna do at, uh, at, in their final Worlds run in the Edison division. Yeah, no, uh, you know, I think there's definitely a lot of mystery as to whether they were going to build a new robot or not um, coming into Worlds, you know, as they had a couple months to prepare uh, with the Washington State Championship being in early February. Uh, regardless, they decided not to build uh, a new robot, but really focus on the consistency of this one. And overall, I think it was the right uh, decision. This is a very battle-tested uh, and, you know, proven robot. They have the 
second highest teleop OPR, fifth highest world OPR right now, I believe. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's something I always say. Uh, and I guess we'll see how that turns out um, with this robot. Yeah. Miriam, what do you think? I think Kuki, um, yeah, they are an insane robot, um, you know, like so short, like I think like it's just impressive, like like their packaging and like it's just so simple. Like I was expecting like, you know, active intakes to be a lot more common, but like they've mastered the driving with their claw, um, you know, and just it's like simple, yet it works so well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm really like excited to see them perform in Edison. Yeah, me too. All right, going on to our uh, third place, Buru, take it away. Starting at the top three, we have team 14496 Roboctopi from Escon Escondido, California. There is so much to be said about this team. Firstly, we have a behind the ball with them that goes more more in depth with everything. So go check that out if you're more interested. Most likely, they hold the world record at 416 together with Clueless. They qualified to Worlds on Inspire first place, but also got almost one of each award. Uh, that they just, yeah, they're amazing in that part. And they cast their own mechanism rollers, which is pretty cool. They'll definitely do well in the design division along with a lot of really competitive teams there. So. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm sure their judging is very, very excellent. So I guess the question is more of like which award uh, hopefully they'll be nominated for at Worlds rather than if they'll be nominated uh, for an award. But Roboctopi, you know, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing them a couple weeks ago. Just really, really fantastic uh, as a team, as a robot, everything all around. Uh, and, you know, they made another excellent reveal that we saw in the finale group. Um, and I, I can't wait to see how they'll do in Edison, you know, 11 matches. They're one of those robots that's just consistent every single time. Um, and I think that's really going to shine in their ranking. Yeah. Anything you guys want to add Thomas or Miriam? Um, yeah, there's something I wanted to add is I just thought that the fact that they made custom mechanism rollers was like crazy. Um, yeah. it, it just like. Like beyond the fact that it's actually like really effective, it's also just cool that they did it because that that's something I would have never thought to do, but it's just something amazing that they just innovated and did because they yeah. wanted to improve it. Yeah, no, for for sure. And you know, another thing with that that I'd like to point out uh, to teams out there that I think is a great lesson to learn is Roboctopi clearly has the technical knowledge to do like all the silicone casting uh, procedures. And I think Guru, you guys also did some silicone casting, but they were very um, intentional in what they chose to remake and what they chose to not, right? Like while I was going through with their behind the bot, they redid the mechanum rollers, they redid the odometry rollers, but certain parts of their intake, they just used uh, commercial off the shelf parts that already existed, right? And I remember asking them, I was like, you guys clearly know how to make your own, why didn't you guys do, uh, why didn't you guys make it? And, uh, you know, they they realized what, they, what already existed worked super well, and so they decided not to. And I think that's a really important lesson uh, for for teams to learn out there uh, from Roboctopi, you know, just all around super excellent team uh, and fantastic robot. Can't wait to see how they do in Edison. Yeah. Okay, Miriam, let's uh, hear about number two then. Our runner up for the night is team 19066 AI citizens from Romania. I don't think they need much of an introduction, but they were the winning Alliance captain at the Romanian national championship. They will be competing in the Franklin division next week. As the top 10 OPR team in the world, their robot is just insane. Something that is interesting is how they only use the Extendo in Teleop and not in Auto. I feel like many teams would do the opposite given the defense potential, but they have been getting some very positive results. And Franklin is the hardest division in my opinion, but AI Citizens is part of the reason for that. And I'm expecting some strong performance from them. Yeah, and you know, Miriam, just a couple things I want to add on to what you said. Uh, you said top ten OPR, or maybe I, yeah, I think I heard top ten. But just to be clear, they're the top OPR team yeah. uh, in the world. You know, 194 points, just absolutely insane performance uh, from them, and they're also averaged above 300 points uh, in their qualification matches. Actually, 313 uh, points in their qualification matches, which is just just nuts uh in my opinion i mean that's like basically a top 50 score every single match that they played uh so super super impressive um and you know showing how impressive 
their match performance was without using the extendo in autonomous knowing that they've had about a month uh to prepare if they were to add it into their autos i just can't even imagine how effective they'll be um you know seeing them play against uh clueless or something like that in a qualification match would just be nuts um but you know thankfully we won't have to wait too much longer uh to see if it'll happen or not yeah buru anything you want to add about ai citizens Okay, yeah, so I got to play against this team too, and they're definitely a powerhouse. So everything about them is just consistency. They are just works every time and so well. It's funny, really, that they, everything they did, even the extent, not using external intel, that's just an auto, sorry. That's just consistent, consistency again. It's like it's their main focus. Almost one thing that's really funny about them, I think you noticed that it, they're driving so well. Their driver, it's a sole driver, first of all, and it's he's only 13 years old. It's funny. Wow. Yeah. That that is crazy. And he's so good. Wow. That that's pretty nuts. Yeah. Um okay. With that, I think it's time to talk about our number one team for our final center stage top 25. That is going to go to team one one two one two, the clueless from California. They I mean, what can you say about them? You know, they have 416 points world record, second highest OPR right now at 189 points. Uh, they're in the Franklin division with just a slew of top teams. Uh, but, you know, what a reveal. We we talked about it uh, just about 30 minutes ago, um, but I think we can definitely stay and admire it one more time. Just really, really great uh, reveal, but also really great robot. I did a behind the bot with them a couple weeks ago as well, and just so, so much going on there. Um, especially in the deposit, I think. That's a huge thing I want to highlight. I remember they very intentionally added a finger um, on their deposit so that they could manipulate pixels on the backdrop more easily. Uh, and that was a conversation I think we were having as hosts um, off the show is like, you know, do we think there's going to be a lot of backdrop manipulation? Uh, whether there is or not, I think Clueless is re ready for it uh, regardless. Um, but yeah, just really, really excellent robot. Uh, Miriam, anything you want to add about them? Yeah, so I mean, Clueless, like, you know, it was, you know, they're, they were fine. They've been on the finals field at Worlds before, and I would not be at all surprised if they make it there again. Um, you know, this is just like a really, like, you know, super impressive robot. Uh, yeah, I mean, that finger, like, I think that is something that is interesting because I actually. Like, I, I mean, personally, I'm not sure how much pixel manipulation there will be because I feel like just the, the amount of, like, cycles that, like, these robots can do. Like, these robots are just so fast, but it's just, like, this robot is just, like, you know, overall, like, it's, like, really impressive. I also like, you know, their intake, like, all those different shapes of TPU. Um, that's just, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, they, they clearly went through a lot of testing on that. So I, yeah, I'm just really excited to see how this robot does next week. Yeah, for sure. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up our final FTC uh, top 25 for center stage. What teams do you all think deserve to be in the top 25 that weren't? Let us know in the fun discord or comment on the YouTube video. And, you know, with Worlds coming up in five days, we're going to be recording a ton, ton of great footage. Uh, and then after that, we have MTI, CRI, a bunch of events uh, before the center stage season is over for good. But before we end for the night, let's do our final giveaway. Tyler, take it away. Yeah, once again, it's for the First Tech Challenge driver station table from our friends at Animark. If you do win, please go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner to put in your information. Uh, just a reminder, uh, it is championship time. Suppliers might be a little bit slower getting stuff out. So please expect probably until the end of the month. Uh, in order to win uh, or in order to receive your giveaway. So it's going to go to Luke the Penguin 12. Congratulations, Luke. Uh, make sure you uh, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash winner uh, in order to claim. And thanks again to both Opti and Animark for the awesome giveaways. All right, Miriam, why don't you uh, start us off with the outro? Thank you for all the follows and subscriptions we received today. Don't forget that you can help support the channel through YouTube Join to gain access to exclusive benefits. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Top 25. If you want to stay connected with what First Updates Now FTC is doing, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and X under at FunFTC and join our Discord through the link in chat. 
Yeah, and, you know, on behalf of myself, Buru, Miriam, Thomas, and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. Keep an eye, keep an eye out for future new FTC content coming on YouTube, new live shows, and, you know, let's just all have a great time at Champs. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check out our social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.